Welcome to Nonsense Farm. Today, I am doing what I consider the secret sauce of vegetable gardening, and that is seed starting. When you think about it, if you're gonna have a vegetable garden and you just buy your starts at the store, let's say you buy a broccoli plant and it's $3 for the little pot. And what you get from that, if you're successful, is one broccoli plant. So you get one nice head of broccoli. Well, how much would that broccoli head have been if you bought it at the store? It probably was not more than that. It probably was less than that. So while it's fun to grow it, financially it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're paying as much for the plants as you would for the food and you put weeks and weeks of work into it and maybe you know lose half of them to pests or whatever. So anyway, I think that seed starting is something that everyone should consider and learn about. Another advantage to seed starting is that um, it's January and it's cold and misty and gross outside, but yet I still get to do fun things with farming, even though it's miserable outside. So I've been seed starting for a few years and I've you know evolved and uh, things have changed from year to year as they should if you're uh, if you're doing something and you're you learn more about it and you get better at it then it, uh, what you do should change so what I have been doing is um, doing soil blocking huge fan of soil blocking the fact is that most of the plants that I start I sell and so what I was doing was I was starting them with soil blocking and then I was having to transplant them into the pot anyway and so then I was having to mess with it twice. Not only that, but the plants that you start with soil blocking, you have to, you know, water them a certain way. You have to pour the water onto the tray and then the blocks um, soak up the water and you have to pour off the excess. And, you know, if you go out of town, you have to really show somebody how to do it and blah, blah, blah. Whereas um, if I just plant directly into these pots, then um, I can just, I can take a pot out fill this up with water and then the roots will grow right out of the bottom of these pots and soak up the water. And so I can put several days worth of water right into the, right into this tray and um, it's just much more flexible. Um, also, this is the uh, seed starting mix that we're using today. I got it at Lowe's. They also sell it at Home Depot, probably a lot of other places. This, uh, this is organic. Um, all it is, is peat moss, coconut coir, and vermiculite. There's no nutrition in this seed starting mix. miracle Grow also makes um, a seed starting mix. It's about twice as expensive. It is not organic because the miracle Grow that is in it is not organic. Um, Mir miracle Grow does have some organic products, but just their seed starting mix isn't. Um, the fact is when you start a seed, it does not need nutrition until the second set of leaves comes out. So when it first sprouts and it's those first baby leaves, which there's a scientific name for it and I don't know what it is, um, there's enough nutrition in the seed to get it to the second set of leaves. Once that second set of leaves come out, then, um, then that's when you need to start putting fertilizer, a little bit of fertilizer in there, which is fine. You can put it into your water like fish fertilizer or garret juice or whatever kind of organic fertilizer you wanna use and pour it in right with the water. Another thing I've learned over the years is that when you're seed starting, fungus is not your friend. And so uh, one of the things that I do, and it probably isn't necessary, but I just, any little thing that can help you. Um, I put very hot water, I heat it up in my tea kettle, very hot water into the seed starting mix to get it nice and hot to kill any fungus gnats. Um, anything that has to do with fungus is not healthy for your plants. And we'll talk more about that as we go on. Another thing about seed starting is once you get started with seed starting, you will want all of the seeds. And so you will end up with a lot of seeds. And last year I um, went in my office and I found an entire box of seeds that I had ordered from Johnny's, Johnny's Seed Company, and I love them. Um, and I had forgotten that I ordered them and I had gone and gotten more seeds. So I double bought seeds, which the seed order that I just did from Johnny's was like $88. And these things 
are not free. Um, so then I decided it was time that I get um, organized with my seeds. And so um, I think I saw somebody else did this, but um, this is a four by six photo organizer. And so these little convenient things. And I just put a label on each one of them. And so then I, I open up and I can see what I have and um, see what I need to order. And it gives me a little bit of self-control when I'm at a garden store and I'm in front of a seed display. This year I had to buy a second one because, you know, there's just more kinds of seeds than 24. I will uh, try to remember to put a link in the description. Just got it from Amazon. Just look for four by six photo organizer. I think we bring it up. Anyway, I'm gonna make um, a label with my label maker now for uh, peppers and cauliflower, which are two of the things that I do not have containers for in the other container. If you're gonna pour the boiling hot water into your seed starting mix, you do need to allow time for it to uh, cool off a little. Now, it doesn't need to be room temperature because you're gonna be putting it on a heat mat, so it needs to be, it's fine if it's warm, you want it to be warm. Like tomatoes and peppers, they need warmer soil to sprout. But you don't want to have it be so hot. You can, I don't know if you can see it, but this is steaming. You don't want it to be, uh, you don't want to be steaming when you put the seeds in. You don't want to kill the seeds. All right, two more things that I learned last year. One is these uh, uh, biodegradable pots. Great concept, terrible in reality. Uh, what actually happens with these is that they start to degrade while you're still growing your plant. And so these pots, they get all moldy. The, the, for instance, I would have the same plant in here and in here. This plant would do so much better because the plant actually gets the water instead of it getting soaked up into this porous material. So I know it seems like this is a great idea, but it just isn't. Stick with plastic. And then finally, last year, one of the things I ran into was um, I would grow all these plants and I, I would stick the seed packet like at the front of the row and the seed packet would get all wet and you couldn't read anymore and it was just a mess. So I bought a, a whole, ah, oops, I bought a whole pack of these and uh, I'll just write a different marker in each one. That way, no matter how the uh, plants get divided up or mixed up. I'll always know what that is and the variety. People ask me, so like I'll say, these are cherry tomatoes and people will go, what kind of cherry tomatoes? And I didn't remember. So anyway, this will solve that problem. All right, so first, I just need to fill up each one of these pots. We have a wonderful garden center here in Dallas, in the Dallas area called North Haven Gardens. And they put out this wonderful um, sheet that has the vegetable planting dates for spring and fall. And I just keep a copy of it uh, folded up inside my um, seed organizer. And so for January, which right now is January 8th, for January it says uh, to put out onion slips, which I have onion slips, hoping to get them in the ground tomorrow. Today it's just rainy and gross. Um, broccoli by seed indoors, Brussels sprouts by seed indoors. I've only had luck with Brussels sprouts one time and that was a volunteer, like I didn't do it on purpose. Anyway, uh, cauliflower by seed indoors, coll uh, collard greens by seed indoors, kale by seed indoors, lettuce by seed indoors, tomatoes by seed indoors, spinach by seeds in or out, Swiss chard in or out. Now and then it says you can start peppers by seed January 15th to March 1st. So i um, not gonna do any peppers today. I guess I'll do broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce, and tomatoes. So here we go. All right, these are the broccoli seeds. I think there's enough for this whole tray. Again, from Johnny Seeds, Green Magic Broccoli. Go through here, make a little hole with my finger in each one. Okay. 
If these were really old seeds, I would uh, maybe put a couple in each hole. But these are just from last year, so they should be fine. So I'm just putting one seed in each hole. Come on. I do need one to go in each hole though. There is a little less than $5, even buying it pre-made, a little less than $5 of seed starter mix of this uh, dirt uh, in each tray. So it's not very much, especially I'll sell these plants for probably $3 a piece. And then of course the seeds per seed, not terribly expensive. So the math definitely works out. Another thing I was thinking about as I was uh, working on this today is with all these seeds, or excuse me, all these garden beds that I am building, I have so much more capacity. Maybe I won't be able to sell any of these because maybe I'll need them all. There probably is a more efficient way to do this, but I don't know what it is. trying to write the variety on here as well because like I said people tend to ask and I don't have the whole length of the marker to write on because part of it is under the dirt all right so out here in the garage is where I have the heat mats for the seed trays. They stay on heat until they sprout and then you put them under lights. You can see this, uh, there's a temperature probe on each heat mat that makes it stay warm enough. You set it for how warm the seed needs to be in order to sprout. So these, it won't take very long for these to sprout in just a couple days. They'll sprout and then I'll, I'll put them under lights. So there we go. I got a tray of tomatoes, a tray of broccoli, a tray of cauliflower, and a tray of lettuce today. So generally, starting in January, like several days a week, I'm, I'm starting seeds. So here we go.